Everybody loves to look. Oh, what's he doing? <clears throat> All right, once again, welcome to episode one of Feetzen. Uh, this is where I'll just be occasionally making a new uh, video, riding around somewhere local, um, showing you some things and having a discussion uh, based off your comments, questions on Twitter. Let's see if I can address this. <laughs> see if I can read this while I'm writing. Don't do this at home, kids. The first question I have here is, hard to read in the dark. You started your journey being very pro-cars, maybe even anti-bike. What do you think bike advocates need to reach and connect with these people in a way that doesn't turn them off? How can I help someone else have the same realizations that you have had? That is an excellent question. And I'm afraid I won't give an excellent answer, but I'll try. The best thing I can do is just try to show off how well it works and complements my life, and mostly through media, so pictures and videos. You're not gonna change a lot of minds with words, but uh, with your media, you can do a lot, so that would be my best suggestion. Okay, here we are arriving so we got some rental bikes here, a bike fix-it station, bike parking, place to hang out, and we got some restrooms up here. So this is pretty nice. Public restrooms, bike parking, surrounded by greenery. Circle around here. So I think this is a good place to address another Twitter question. Next question from Beth. How do people treat you on USA streets? 20 years ago, I lived in the US and cycled and it was awful. Have things changed? I've only been doing this a handful of years now and I don't particularly feel um, valued or welcome on streets in the US basically because of narcissistic behavior by people in cars. Um, so I very much feel like I have to own my own safety and they don't care about it. The burden of safety is on me and myself. And if they hit me, hurt me, kill me, uh, it's gonna be my fault. So that's very much my sentiment um, towards riding a bike in the US right now. And uh, I have a sneaky suspicion that um, a lot of people feel that same way. Okay answered another question, let's ride around some more. So as I said, the Monon Community Center is here, right along the Monon Trail, or the Monon Greenway, I don't know what locals prefer it to be. <laughs> I know they have a skate park, a water park, gym, personal training, indoor basketball courts, uh, swimming, everything a great community center would have. Uh, and I'm gonna face the camera forward so you can see how we cycle through here. So the trail, passes right underneath one of the walkways for the community center. And up top there is uh, workout equipment. There's also some bike parking here underneath. Let's circle through here. So see a little bit of bike parking here. There is a fix-it station for bikes. So now let's take a look at the skate park where the best of my understanding, no bikes are allowed. So right here on the left is a skate park. Um, again, this is a Tuesday morning, so kids are in school. There's one person there, but normally it's, I've seen it pretty, pretty busy. I mean, really in peak time, this is a great amenity for the community. And I'm guessing right now with school back in session, it's a lot of older adults coming here to do their thing. Now that the kids and the teenagers are back in class. Bueller. 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 So let's ride up here and see if we can get a peek at the water park. You can kind of see it there, the water slide up there. So there's the water park. And generally this place is hopping. I'm wondering if, yeah, it looks like it's done for the season. 
that one pool was empty, so I guess they close down when school starts. And on the other side, I have a beautiful view of nature. And this gate is closing for whatever reason. Okay. Let's go explore some nature. I've seen the water park. We saw part of the community center building, saw the skate park. I call that good enough. So by the way, uh, if you like this, please hit that like button. Not because I give a shit about the algorithm, because I don't make any money off of this. But it's kind of my only way of knowing if you actually enjoy these videos. Uh, and also, if you have any questions or suggestions, if you have a Twitter, it would mostly be helpful for you to come over there and um, reach out and send me a message. I know where I want to go, I just don't know how to get there. Hey, screw it, let's go around this roundabout. <laughs> Not that I need to. But everybody likes roundabouts, right? Especially motors. I guess I should be answering another question or comment. We will get to it. Hey, hey, look at that. Nine freedom units per hour. But here's a beautiful view ahead. Morning. So here's some ducks. Can I not disturb them? You guys are fine. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> they left. I disturbed the ducks. Let's handle another Twitter question. Maybe we'll see it in the video, but I want to hear about the reactions that you get. Maybe you're a regular site in your community, but generally bikes like that are not super common on North American streets. Do people treat you differently when you ride a cargo bike? If so, how? Excellent question. Um, I get a lot of looks. I get a lot of stares. I get a lot of strained eyes watching me go by. And um, people don't generally engage me or ask me questions, but when they do, it's very nice. Uh, and uh, I tend to get more questions or comments when my wife is riding uh, in the Urban Arrow with me. I get a lot of people that say, oh, now that's the way, or oh, I like that, or, you know, just, just the general commentary. No, uh, it's just a lot of rubbernecking, a lot of people wondering what is that, because uh, they don't see them. Um, I'm probably one of, I don't know, three Bachfeets. Uh, that you could find around here and probably yeah the only urban arrow so there's still a long way to go I, I don't even really even see turn my wife is the only turn bike I've seen it's a lot of rad rad power bikes dare I say smaller brands or just not non-dutch brands uh, that are still riding around here and that's generally because they're cheaper and people are slow to adopt those things over here because they're still learning about them so I hope that answers your question Next question, if you remember, what was your aha moment when your brain clicked and you knew that the bike life was your future? What experience or event helped you realize that bikes are greater than cars? So I've told this story so many times and my audience does keep growing on Twitter. So sometimes I lose track of who knows what and who doesn't, um, but that's a, another excellent question. So my aha moment was 2017 um, arriving in uh, the Netherlands for the first time. So I got off the airplane, um, went downstairs in Schiphol, and got on the train to take an hour ride to Sir Totenbals, uh, where I was gonna be staying. And it just blew my mind that I got off an airplane, I got onto a train, then I got off the train and walked 10 minutes to where I was staying. And it was all simple. Uh, I didn't feel threatened or oppressed by cars. I didn't feel the need for a car. Um, and that's where it all started for me. That was my aha, like, whoa, this can actually work? You gotta be kidding me. Because I, I used to think that the whole um, transit and bikes and walking, you know, that might have worked in 1940 in the US, or I don't know, that might work in your magical little uh, village in uh, Europe, but it could never work anywhere else. Uh, so it was the Netherlands that, that was my aha that taught me that things can be better, we can do things better, and 
we don't have to live by the car and die by the car. Uh, and then it just all went, I went down the rabbit hole from there. Started looking into things, learning more, and I was basically immersed in the Netherlands and Dutch culture and Dutch cycling. And just been going at it for years now. It was definitely a slow process. It wasn't like the next day I was radicalized. I did spend a, a very large amount of time even feeling like, oh, you know, this bike thing is cool, but a lot of these people are overboard. They're, you know, ban cars, that's crazy. I thought that that was extreme talk, and uh, but I just didn't fully understand stand it at the time. So I got ducks all around me, so I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of distracted. Oh, I love ducks. I'll oh, stay there. You rest. So I hope that answers your question on my aha moment. And it continues to develop today. I don't believe I'm my final product yet, so. So now we're just riding around and taking things in and I'm trying to answer some more questions. Morning. There's a water park over there that's still open for kids and families. Of course, it looks like they all drove here. Minivans and mid-sized SUVs. For cheaper than the price of buying and maintaining one of those, you could get this bike and you and your kids could come to the park. You don't have to use it for everything, but you could start using it for things like this and it'd do you a lot of good and your kids would love it. As Not Just Bikes has said, you could buy a new Urban Arrow every single year, throw it in the trash at the end of the year, and still come out financially ahead, as opposed to owning, owning, maintaining, and paying for a new car. I'm just driving around like I don't know what I'm doing, because I don't know what I'm doing. All right, let's do another question. I'd love to hear your opinions on the mandatory helmets debate. As you all know, I don't wear a helmet. Uh, I was brought back to the bicycle by the Dutch, and um, they don't wear helmets either. And I know I don't live in the Netherlands. That's, that's apparent to me every single day. But to me, helmets turn me off to cycling. So if I need to put on a helmet to go somewhere, I don't like it. Um, and, and some people might think I'm crazy for that, but it's just my own personal feelings, and I feel like it would be um, something that would actually keep me away from cycling if I had to put a helmet on all the time. I'd probably just drive a car. I don't, I feel like helmets offer a false sense of security. I, I don't think that I'm gonna stand much of a chance not being critically injured or killed by being hit by a car while I'm wearing a helmet. Um, sure, there, there's plenty of people out there who have had their lives saved, been spared traumatic brain injuries from helmets, and that's great. And for that reason, they're really useful for a lot of situations and a lot of people. Um, but I want my infrastructure to be my helmet, not a hardened plastic bowl on the top of my head. I don't shame anybody for wearing one. I mean, if you feel the need to wear a helmet, please do, especially if it gets you on a bike uh, more than otherwise. Wear a helmet, don't. Uh, I think it's up to everybody, and um, I do want everybody to stay safe, but ultimately in the end, it's not helmets that are gonna save all of our lives. It's going to be better infrastructure design and fewer cars on the road while we're walking. <clears throat> Why are we walking? We're gonna read this question and then we're gonna ride. So I have had a lot of questions about what is the gear setup like? And I'm gonna cover that in another video or episode two, but things are still a little bit in transition right now uh, because of a camera issue. So we'll cover that uh, at another time. Pete or Pete, how big is your 15 minute neighborhood, practically speaking? How far do you go to cover your routine weekly needs? Groceries, shopping, dining, pharmacy, work, medical, entertainment. Pete or Pete, that is a wonderful question and I love your name. I love it every single time I see somebody put pizza in their name. I, I do live in Carmel, Indiana, um, and that was a conscious choice a little over a year ago. And this place is far from perfect. It's still very much a motorist city. There is a network of paths that enable me to easily live by bike, and for the most part, do not have to seek out things ahead of time as far as can I get there? It's normally just how do I get there because I'm not from here, right? I would say most of everything I need falls within six kilometers radius. 
I have multiple grocery stores I can go to. I currently have two that are my go-tos, and one is a kilometer away or less, actually, and the other one is five. I have dry cleaners, restaurants, uh, a coffee shop, public spaces to go to. Um, yeah, I, I have pretty much everything that I need within about six kilometers. And if I ever go outside of that, it's normally for some specialty store or specialty item. And then outside of that, there's always delivery, right? So uh, yeah, I would say I'm not, I'm not as lucky as the Dutch in that like I can walk 100 to 300 meters and have 75 grocery stores <laughs> within a few minutes of me. Uh, massive exaggeration. But when it comes to North America and when it comes to the US, I have it really good here, I would say. I still have tons of complaints. A lot of things Carmel does wrong and it can do better to make living like this safer and easier but it's pretty good. So I'm headed back now, I'm done. We kind of took a look around nature, answered some questions, and I don't know. Uh, what else do you want to see? Um, I obviously plan on doing more of these. This was just episode one, and it was kind of done on the fly. I didn't really have a big plan, but I'm looking forward to doing more, and I hope my presence is engaging enough and entertaining enough. I'll try to up it a notch every now and then if I can. Work a little bit on the hand gestures and a little bit more of this. That's what YouTubers do, right? I, I, I don't know. But anyway, thank you for coming along. Um, hold on. Let me, isn't this just beautiful? The morning sun coming up, the green canopy, sound of insects and birds. So that's that. Uh, if I missed any of your comments or questions, I'm sorry. I will try to get to them in a future episode, or you can comment uh, on the Twitter post for future episodes to resubmit, and I will do my best to answer them, and as thoroughly as possible. But for now, turn this up to turbo, all right. But for now, thanks for coming along. Uh, thanks for watching the video, and I hope to bring more of it in the future and I hope you enjoy it and let's make this a thing. So uh, thanks everybody, bye.